Hey, product review time. Uh, I was contacted by Kai Wheats the other day and they said, hey, we've got some things we want to send you to have a look at. So I said, sure, send them over and uh, here they are. So we've got a uh, smart multimeter, model number KM201. And we've got a voltage detector, model HT100S. So I've got a um, AC and DC calibrators and uh, precision resistors and that sort of thing. So we can give these things a good run and see how they go. So we've got a, uh, a manual there, smart multimeter, true RMS. We'll see if they uh, perform to their specifications. And then once we've uh, run them up, oh, it comes with a little soft felt bag. Nice. Uh, we can uh, tear them open and see what's going on inside. I'm not going to do any destructive testing. And it comes with batteries. Batteries are included. Um, but yeah, we can give them a, a bit of a, a squeeze inside and see what's going on. So the, uh, the leads here, they're soft. I wouldn't say that. No, they're not silicon, but they're soft. Thinner than, uh, and much, and smaller than the um, ones that come with like Fluke and uh, Keysight and that sort of thing. But, I mean, it's a little mini device, so mini probes. Come with a little uh, snoot protectors to uh, cover up so you don't inv inadvertently short against something. Only a little end tip there. Oh, they're relatively sharp too. Not needle sharp, but they're uh, not too bad. That feels all right. So let's put the batteries in. Nope. Got the uh, QC pass sticker on the back. So you know everything's going to be okay. Ah, a brass inset there for the thread for the uh, the battery door. That's nice. So it's less likely to strip out over time as you change your batteries. It's always a nice little touch. Oh, we're on auto. So I'll put that back together. Safety first. All right. Now it looks like looks like there's a light on the end as well. <laughs> nice. That's cool. And it's got a backlight. How do you turn that off? Or does it just turn off by itself? Now this thing apparently, I'm going to have to read the instructions. But it um, it auto, not just auto range, but it also, also automatically chooses what function it should be in. It's got a non-contact volt. Uh, live, I have to see what that is, phase, and then it's volt, uh, AC volts, ohms, and uh, continuity. So, there's no way to f uh, switch between the, uh, the volt and uh, ohms and continuity. So I think that just uh, does it automatically. It's pretty quick, but not super quick. Alright, so I've had a bit of a read of the destructions, and uh, we press the button here to cycle through the modes. So let's try the non-contact volts. I've got a uh, power cable here, which I've prepared earlier. And you can see there, it says hi, because we're against the, uh, the live side. If we turn it around, it says low, depending on how, low and high, depending on how it uh, detects. So that's working. Also, it has live, and what that is, it turns out it's a uh, a way to detect if the you got a live wire, if you don't have anywhere to put the other side. So it's not like a voltage detection, um, like measuring the voltage. It should detect like a non-contact, but only with one contact. So you can see there. But if I put it in the uh, neutral side, nothing into the earth. Nothing. So if you're up in the roof of your house and you've got a single switch wire or something and you've got nowhere to, to ground to for the, the other side, you can still probe it and it will tell you, yep, we got a live wire there. So that's pretty cool. Um, then we've got the uh, a phase. It, it will do phase rotation, which is also pretty cool. Um, 
I can't demonstrate that working because in Japan, pretty much everything is split phase. That's like basically two phase. A um, bit different from two phase, but basically the same. And uh, so I don't have three phase. Even if I go to a friend's factory, it's all split phase there as well. Uh, three phase is actually quite rare um, in Japan. So, um, but basically the way it works is you connect your positive and your negative or your red and your black to two phases and then the non-contact to the third phase and it will tell you which way the phase is rotating. So it's good for determining the phase rotation for your motors, uh, make sure the motor's going to turn the right way and uh, yeah, get things synchronized up correctly. So I'm going to assume that works because um, I can't actually test that here. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a, a setup for that. But what we can do is we'll test the resistance. I've got a bunch of resistors here, which I've tested on four wire resistance on my uh, six and a half digit multimeter. And uh, we can see if it comes in under tolerance. So the tolerances for the resistance is uh, 1% plus three counts um, for the uh, 2000 ohms, two kilo ohms and 200 kilo ohms. And then we're at up to 1.5% plus three counts for two meg and 20 meg. So um, these resistors, yeah, more accurate than what that can show. Um, so let's try our 1K, and it should go to the, the 1K pretty precisely um, in the 2000 ohm, the 2K range. Let's see what happens. 1.000. That is absolutely spot on. 1.001, depending on how I wiggle these, 0.999. Yeah, 1K. That's, uh, it's got to be between 987 and 1013. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, 10K, 9.96, and we got to be between 9.87 and 10.13. Yep, perfect. Uh, 100K, 99.4, 99.5, we've got to be between... 98.7 and 101.3. Yep, that's fine. And one mega ohm, 996, 0.996, and we've got to be between 0.9853 and 1.018. That's perfect too. I've got the old Caddock here. This one here is a Caddock, the one mega ohm, but I've got a 10 mega ohm here. It's 0.01%, 10 mega ohm. What's that going to give us? 9.95 and we've got to be between 9.85 and 10.18. So yeah, resistance is spot on. Not a problem there at all. That's good. All right, I'm going to get myself set up and we're going to start testing the voltages. We can't, um, we can't give it more than 600 volts. It says in the manual, 600 volts is the maximum. And it says on the front here as well, 600 volts. So I can, I can technically give up to 1200 volts uh, with my equipment, but we won't. We will give up to 600 volts and see how those percentages work. All right, we're set up here ready for the uh, AC voltage test. I've got my Yokogawa 2558 AC voltage current standard here, uh, hooked up to my Keysight 34461A 6 and a half digit multimeter. I trust this more than I trust the display on here. This is uh, recently calibrated, 6 and a half digits. It's pretty solid. So we're going to compare between this and this. So we'll set this up ignoring the display on here uh, so we get the correct output as read by this multimeter and then we can compare so that's going to be a more fair comparison I think also the uh, the specifications are from 40 hertz to 1 kilohertz so I've got my function generator currently set to 40 hertz that's feeding into the calibrator and then we're, we can set the uh, frequency on here and see how this reads at 40 hertz and at 1 kilohertz to make sure it's going to be within spec so if we turn that on I turn it to correct mode this is at 2 volts, 2.000, and we're getting 2.002 .002 at 40 hertz. And we should be between 1.95 and 2.05, so that is spot on. So if we set this to 1 kilohertz, and now we're reading, we'll alter this a little bit to get that up just 2.000. There we go, and 2.003. Still well within spec. Perfect. All right, top of the 20 volt range, and we got 20.00 volts, 20.001 at 40 hertz. That's fine. We've got to be below 20.5, 20 
So that is spot on. And once again, one kilohertz. And we are 20.1. That's below 20.5. That is also spot on. We can actually wind that just a little bit. There we go, 20.13. We've got to be below 20.5. So that is also good. All right, we're at the top of the 200 volt range now. 40 hertz, 199.98 volts, and we're reading 200.1. So I don't know if you can see that, but that is actually showing red on the display there. A little bit bright with the, the lights, but yeah. That's nice, little visual indication, let you know you're playing with something dangerous. Um, so yeah, 199.99 volts, 200.1, got to be below 205, so that's good. So let's give it 1 kilohertz. And we've got 199.8, we can give that a little bit more. There we go, 200 volts, 201.4, spot on. And now for the big one, 600 volts. So at the moment I've got uh, 590 volts at 40 hertz. And once again it's got the red display, we're reading 590 exactly. Now I've, I'm going to step up to 600 volts and check it out. So it's 590 now. You can hear the beeping. Another uh, warning saying, yeah, danger, danger, you're at the max. So at 599.98 volts, so it's basically 600 volts, we are once again spot on. And if we go to the uh, 1 kilohertz, and we'll wind this a little bit. There we go, 600 volts exactly, and 604, so we want to be under 609. AC test has passed. This thing is reading fine. And the DC voltage test now. We've got the uh, Yogi 2552 DC voltage standard. And uh, we've got it set to 2 volts. We're going to do the same deal looking on here compared to here. And um, we should be below 2.04. Between 1.96 and 2.04. And we've got 2.008 for uh, basically exactly 2 volts output. That one's good. So next level up 20 volts let's give that little tweak there we go exactly 20 volts and we got 20.07 thumbs up all right now for the 200 volts we'll give that a little bit of a tweak again 200 volts exactly and we've got 200.8 once again it's gone red to let us know that we're playing with dangerous voltages 200.8 once again thumbs up and the last one 600 volts 500 volts 600 volts it's beeping at us give us a little bit of a tweak 600 volts i'll give it one more there we go and we got 601 volts for 600.000 nothing yeah, this thing reads fine. There's nothing wrong with the calibration or the accuracy of this thing. It's, yeah, thumbs up on that. All right, time to open this up, see what makes it tick. Now, I don't claim to be a, a professional or an expert on uh, multimeter design, but I'll have a good crack at it and see if there's anything that's obvious. I might miss something. I might not uh, know the uh, exact details. But we'll have a look inside and see what we can find. Alright, so that's what we got going on inside. Not too much at all. Looks like the case has got the usual tongue and groove thing going on for the blast shielding. And the uh, battery compartment has the same as well. It's got a groove there and a tongue around the edge there. So that's a nice touch. But in the way of the circuit board, it's pretty simple. Looks like we got uh, the wires come in. No fuses or anything, just straight to the board. Would be nice to see a fuse there. But then uh, we got some uh, a string of resistors there. Looks like these blue ones, they may be fusible resistors. Uh, without a bomb, I wouldn't be 100% sure, but I'd I would expect those probably are fusible. Uh, two springs for the battery compartment contacts. Uh, a few MOSFETs or some sort of transistors or something. That's probably for all the function switching, I guess. We've got the beeper chip on board, 
That's the uh, the brains of the whole operation. No idea what's inside there. Uh, I've got the LED and uh, the probe for the uh, for the voltage non-contact voltage detection and uh, some other bits and pieces around the place there. I'm not sure what chip that is, but yeah, we've got some wires there going to the backlight. So that'll be for the uh, the different colours of the backlight, the red and the uh, the green and whatnot. I expect that the LCD would just be on a zebra strip. If we undo the four screws, it doesn't look like there's any PTCs or anything. Not much in the way of input protection, which would be nice to have. Although the impedance of the thing is pretty high because there is no current rating or no current range. Yeah, there's a backlight panel and the LCD there with a zebra strip against there. And we've got the uh, three contacts for the buttons. Usual uh, slick and rubber. Not much going on that side there at all. So that can all go back together. So yeah, that's basically what we got inside. So final thoughts. Yeah, I rate it. It's not a bad little unit. The voltage AC and DC and resistance measures perfectly fine. It's perfectly accurate. Not a problem there at all. Well within its uh, specifications. It's got the uh, non-contact voltage which works. That live function where you can uh, just test with only the red probe. For voltage, yes or no on the voltage, doesn't of course give you a actual reading, but it'll tell you if there's voltage there or not. That's really handy. Uh, I remember as an electrician, uh, as a uh, apprentice and as a full electrician back in Australia, sometimes you're in the roof of a house, you've got to figure out if that wire has a uh, voltage on it, but you don't always have a convenient ground or neutral there available. So to use that just as one probe to see if there is voltage on that line, that's, that's really handy. I do actually really like that. That would have saved me some trouble back in the day. Um, I can't test the phase because, uh, like I said before, in Japan we just don't have three phase easily available, but judging by the fact that everything else works quite well, I'm sure that done, that one does work too. Of course, there's also the uh, handy dandy little flashlight on there. And um, yeah, it seems to do its job. Not a problem at all. As for the input protection, it would be nice to see a little bit more there, maybe PTC or you know, something like a little fuse or something there. Although it doesn't measure current, so we don't need a big current fuse. Um, so, yeah, we just don't need that in there at all. But um, if there's a version 2, maybe a little bit more on the input protection would be nice, just to do the old belt and braces, just bring it to the next level. But the uh, case moulding is good. It's a uh, nicely sized for the hand. The probes are small, but the whole unit is small anyway, so that's not a problem at all. And, uh, yeah, it seems to work quite well. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Um... For the price point and the features it has, it, it works quite well, like it, it does switch ranges properly. The um, the beeper works, I don't know if you can see it's lighting, lighting up green when it when it beeps. Shows you the red to tell you that there's danger at the high voltage, so yeah. Thumbs up, I do like it, it's not too bad. It'd be good to throw in the, um, the toolbox, chuck it in the car or something, use it just for, you know, projects around the house or whatever. I mean, it's definitely not going to uh, replace a fluke, but uh, yeah, for what it is, it does work as advertised. So the uh, Kai Wheats KM201, I think it's a good one. All right, I hope you found that interesting and somewhat informative, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, and before I go, there is one more thing we've got to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we need the peel. Oh, shiny.